Hi everyone, this is Neil Reiterter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who attends annually to have both ears cleaned and they suffer from psoriasis, not only in their ears, but in other parts of their body, so uh, more namely their scalp region as well. And that leads to a buildup of dead skin, keratin in both ears. And we're just commencing with this, the left ear first. The consistency of this wax and keratin laterally, so nearer to the entrance, is quite soft and mushy, whereas more medially deeper in the ear, it's more hard and crusted. And just to help with this more lateral, sticky, mushy wax, I've instilled some olive oil medical grade spray. And what the um, olive oil does, it helps to bind the wax together. As you can see there, it just comes out much easier the suction probe doesn't get blocked because when you've got sticky, mushy, glutinous wax and keratin, it can block um, the tip of the suction probe. So the oil just helps to lubricate it. Now, whilst, I'm, um, whilst you're watching this, I'm just going to explain the technique of removing the wax. Um, more so for um, some of our clear wax delegates, I've had a few requests uh, recently of a few patients that we've trained in the past, just to recap on the technique of how to insert the instrument into the ear. Um, at the same time as the endoscope. And this is a good example because this patient's got quite a twisty, bendy ear canal. So I'm retracting their pinna back and up to stretch and straighten the ear. And I've then inserted the endoscope into the ear and I'm using the right hand side edge of the endoscope to push the cartilage of the, uh, the pinna and the posterior canal wall of the ear canal to the right. So that's stretching the ear wide open and um, the endoscope is also acting like a door stop. It's stopping the ear canal from closing. And by opening the ear in that way, I can then insert the instrument in. So with the instrument, I'm using the tip of the instrument to push the cartilage up and away to reveal the tip of the endoscope. And then I'm looking to glide the in instrument over the top of the endoscope tip. And what that technique enables us to do, it prevents your hands from crossing over. If you're not using that technique and you're trying to lead with the instrument first into the ear and followed by the endoscope, uh, when you get past the second bends, your right and left hands overlap, they cross, and you just lose movement, maneuverability. Your hands kind of lock. So this technique prevents you from doing that. Uh, this technique also ensures the instrument is inserted to the, into the ear com completely safely. It's um, not in close proximity to the canal wall, so it's not going to hurt or um, cause any trauma to the patient as you're inserting it. If you just stretch the ear open and try to force the instrument in blindly, you're going to bump into the canal wall. So by once the endoscope's into the ear and you're using the instrument to push the cartilage that's covering the tip of the endoscope away so that it reveals the tip of the endoscope, you can then glide the instrument over the top of the endoscope, which means when it comes into the ear, it's going to be in the middle of the ear canal. And the key is, is I'm not trying to visualize the wax or the keratin straight away. So in this case, this crusted wax and skin that I'm just removing, it's actually embedded on the eardrum, but the first stage of removing that is just to get the instrument in. So I'm not putting the endoscope in too far into the ear. Because if I did, I wouldn't be able to see the tip of the endoscope, which means when I try to insert the instrument over the top of the tip of the endoscope, I'm going to come in contact with the canal wall. So stage one is just to get the instrument in the ear and you want to position the endoscope just past the first bend. And then, so that's the first bend where I am now. And then to the right, in the case of the left ear, so it's the bottom right hand side of the ear canal. The, side, the right hand side of the endoscope is pushing the cartilage to the right. I get the instrument in over the top and you'll see I'm going to, the instrument's going to come in right over the top. And once I've got the instrument in, then I can go towards the eardrum. Then I can go to the left or the right or the top or the bottom of the ear canal. So stage one is to get the instrument in, which means the endoscope just has to be past the first bend, past the cilia, and then you can move forwards. So um, I hope the clear wax delegates, uh, I will. I know there's a couple of you that have, uh, I, I promised I'll um, talk over it in a video, so I will email you the link to this video as well so you can watch it back and listen to the description and I'll explain the same again for the writer. So that's the technique for the left ear. So you can see the eardrum is fully visible, the, 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 it's a bit of vascularis of the ear canal, the blood vessels are dilated, that's because we remove all the wax. There's just a few remnants there so I'm just going to get that off. So again I'm stretching the ear back and up to stretch the ear open, 
I've got the endoscope in to keep the ear canal open. I then looked into the ear momentarily, so I wasn't looking at the The moment I'm putting the instrument into the ear, I'm actually looking into the ear, not on the screen. Um, I'm pushing the cartilage out of the way using the, the fine end just to reveal the tip of the endoscope. And then I'm going down and over the top of the tip of the endoscope so I can ensure the instrument enters the ear safely without touching any of the canal wall. And once it's in, then I'm moving forwards. So there's just some keratin here at the base of the ear canal near the entrance. There's just some crusted skin there as well due to the psoriasis. And uh, the patient felt a lot better. They're gonna they're gonna use some um, steroid cream um, at the entrance of the ear and then inside the ear they're gonna use some acetic acid spray just to help calm the ear down. Uh, and it's just a chronic problem. It's something that they have to manage. So that hence they come every year. So I'm just, again, I'm gonna explain the technique with the clear wax. Um, um, past specialists and delegates that attend the course. So in the case of the right ear, um, uh, retracting the pinna back, so uh, as you know, we, we pull that back and up, and that stretches and straightens the ear canal. And this ear is really bendy, actually. Now, although the wax is in the distance, what I'm doing, once I've retracted the pinna, I've inserted the endoscope into the ear, just past that first bend, and you can see the ear canal is really, it's almost shut, so I've stretched the ear, you've seen that. The endoscope is now pushing against on the left-hand side, so I'm stretching the ear open on the posterior canal wall and then I'm momentarily looking into the ear and I'm angling the instrument downwards and over the top of the tip of the endoscope. And if there's any cartilage that's in the way, I'm using the tip of the instrument to push the cartilage away to see the tip of the um, endoscope and I'm going directly on top. Once I'm in, then I can move forwards towards the wax. As you can see, now we're going forwards past the bend. So again, we're just going to repeat that. I'm stretching the ear open, as you can see. Endoscope just past the first bend. And I'm actually angling it more to the left. And you can see that instrument came right in the middle. It wasn't towards the right or to the left-hand side of the ear canal. And it just ensures the patient's going to be comfortable. We're, we're not risking um, catching the side of the ear canal with the instrument as we're inserting it. And when we perform ear wax removal, patient comfort is paramount. That, that's We're going to make sure the patient is as comfortable as possible. So... Just managed to get this plug of wax out. It was, it was quite dry and, and dead skin. You can see it's oxidized, it's quite dry. You can see the um, psoriasis patch just there. Very bendy ear canal. You can see the eardrum. Um, it's just some dry skin around the edge. I'm just going to mop that up. So again, I'm stretching the ear open over the top and I'm just going to peel away. So this is on the cartilaginous portion, entering the bony part. When we're on the cartilaginous portion, we can apply a bit of pressure. Uh, the cartilage is flexible, it's not rigid like the bony part of the ear canal. Um, the cartilage has got a thick layer of skin that uh, sits on top of it, so it acts like a buffer. The, the thickness of the skin is about a millimetre in thickness. It may not sound a lot, but in comparison to the skin that lines the bony part of the ear canal, the inner two thirds, that's um, less than 0.1 millimetres in thickness. Um, as I explained, uh, as we always explain, we do the training. At first, um, when you're learning the tr your trade, just don't worry about all these little bits and bobs around the edge because here you just need more precision because you are coming in close contact with the canal wall. Um, it's not going to enhance the patient's hearing. I'm just doing it more as a preventative measure so it just lasts a bit longer if possible for the patient. Um, and they do, as I said, suffer from uh, psoriasis, so itchiness of the ear. So the more I can get out, the better it is, but the patient already feels uh, significantly better. And when I first started, I probably would have left all this because uh, I just wasn't skilled enough at that at that time. And it just comes with practice over the years. So I'm just going to hover over here. Now, we've also had a lot of um, requests uh, for more information about the wax scope. Um, some of you may have been aware I've developed a new device. It was going to be launched a while back. Oh, I won't go into um, some of the obstacles and hurdles we've had to overcome, but... Um, we've got specular that attaches to the end and we interested a company to make it and I will say no more so we're, we're, we're now using another company um, and making really really good progress and um, I don't want to give an update uh, with a finalized deadline date just yet I just want to be um, safe in the knowledge that everything's coming to plan everything looks as though it is um, so you should be hearing a bit more about it in the next uh, six or seven weeks hopefully uh, it's a shame because the wax coat for me is going to be revolutionary. Um, it's really going to make a difference to the world of you know, clinical ear care. But um, sometimes um, uh, challenges occur and 
I won't even go into the detail of it. You won't believe me if I told you. But <laughs> looking back now, it's quite comical. But we are where we are. We're, we're, we're working on track. That's all the debris from both ears. You can see just how dark it is. It's oxidised. It's been there for a while. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. And for the clear wax delegates, um, uh, I will email across uh, this particular link because I think it's a good demonstration video of the technique just so it helps to refresh your, um, your learning. Take care. Bye.